Hello and welcome to the virtual towers of Binary Arcadia, where the game's gone long into the night. Look mate, I've made it! Mate, is that an actual Raspberry Pi? Yeah. Oh, it smells really good mate. Smashed it. I admire your enthusiasm mate, but I think you've got the wrong end of the stick on this one. What do you mean? Back to the drawing boards. Hello and welcome to the Virtual Towers of Binary Arcadia, where the game's gone long into the night. Today will be the first update video on the arcade, tabletop arcade machine. Um, not a great deal to update you on really, but just thought we would um, move the product forward a little bit. Um, so as you can see in front of me, the screen that we've chosen has come. It's a 19 inch screen, so that means the diagonals are 19 inches. Uh, it's an LCD, it's branded Dell, it's second hand, um, I think cost was about 30 quid or so. Um, yeah, there's not much more to say on that. I've taken the stand off of it um, and this has enabled me to get the portions of how wide the machine needs to be. So I'm going to base the machine's width around this. Um, I'm going to go about 500 mil on the width. I think that's probably an ideal size. It gives us about 45 mil worth of overhang each side. It should be a nice screen surround. So that's the screen, and that's fine. Now, so following on from this, what I've done is I've um, come up with what I think is a preliminary design for where everything needs to go. And what I mean by that is, um, there's going to be a lot in this and it's a little more unique than some of the um, bar top arcade machines that we've seen out there. There's some things that we're trying to do that are a little bit unique to the project. Uh, and because of that, it needs some scheming in it. I know um, some of you guys have commented on the video that you know maybe some of the things that we want to try and achieve are maybe a little bit ambitious due to size or uh, actually scheming it. But um, having done this, I'm more confident that we can fit stuff in. So what I've done is I've taken um, uh, a plan that's uh, on the internet uh, for a, a bar, uh, bar top arcade machine, which uh, has some instructions with that. I'll put a link in the video. Uh, in the description, I'll put it on screen now so you can see it. But it's basically a link where you can print out over a number of pieces of paper a one to one um, plan of the arcade machine. So I've taken the side of the machine, just the side, to try and understand what sort of sizes we've got, what space we've got to work with. From this, it's enabled me to draw on what I'm thinking for all of the parts so the linear actuator. I can see where the screen's going to go, uh, how the marquee's going to work and how we're going to um, create that. Uh, and it does mean that we need to slightly adjust um, some of the parts in order to make it fit. Um, but what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll bring you in closer so you can have a good look at this and I'll discuss through it. So this is in essence one-to-one. -one. So this is the exact scale that the side of the machine will be. Uh, and I'll, what I'd like to do is, as you can see, I'd like to add a little bit more curves to some of the corners, just to make it a little bit more person friendly. It also makes it a little bit easier to route out uh, when we get to the wood. As you can see, and it's uh, labelled here, we're going to have a 250mm linear actuator. This will be probably secured to the bottom, but it may also need a framing with it. Uh, then this linear actuator will move up and down the carriage. Now, Currently, I'm thinking the carriage will run on um, conventional draw runners, ball bearing draw runners. Um, and I've based this design around, uh, we have a TV bed. So the TV that comes out of the, out of the end of the bed, basically. 
and I've based this design almost exactly on this, but a much more scaled down version. Um, so this will have a carriage, again, like I just said, it will be on uh, draw runners, um, and this will be activated by a button. Uh, the linear actuator needs a 12 volt power supply, and it also needs a DPDT switch, which in essence is a switch that can, um, as I understand it, reverse the polarity of the electricity, so it makes the electricity flow in one way or the other way, in essence, and that makes the linear actuator move in or move out. And the switch will have like a dead position, so it'll have an on and an off, open, close, and then a, a middle a middle position, which will just be off, so that there's no power going to the linear actuator. Uh, not drawn to scale, as you can see, is the, um, the controller here. I, yeah, my scale went a bit awry here. Um, but that, that they will be on here. Unfortunately, I wanted to get four in a line across the machine. Uh, there isn't enough space to do that. Um, so I wanted to have four in a line across the machine like this. But unfortunately, because that then becomes way more than the 500 mil I previously mentioned, they're going to have to be two rows of two like this. They're going to sit in the machine this way around so that when you clip them in, they clip into the USB charging ports. I think they're micro USBs. Uh, so that basically whenever they're clipped in, they will be charging when the machine's on. So then they'll raise out of the machine on the carriage with the use of the linear actuator. The linear actuator, uh, or the carriage should I say, will have um, some rods on it basically, on the side, and they will be onto the, the flap, which will also have a piece of metal on it. And as the carriage opens, the flap will pivot from its hinge and then the carriage will continue to open until the flap is enough that it will come out. When it closes, it will reverse this and it will just close with it, in essence. Um, and, that, and again, that's exactly how the TV bed that we've got works. Unfortunately, to create this space, whereas the marquee would normally come straight up here, this then needs to create an angle to give us this void for the carriage to come out. Not massively difficult, it just it's a slightly more complicated. It means rather than this piece will continue all the way to the top, it will finish short and then come straight up vertically. A um, few things of note here, the flap will have um, a probably a spring either side, right at the outside, and that's what will basically keep it closed so that it, there's something to keep it back closed. Um, two hinges uh, and their um, concealed hinges on the inside. Um, and then let's just talk about the marquee a little bit. So in the underneath of the marquee, we're gonna have two speakers that are gonna give you your sound. Um, and then in the marquee, we're going to have this button, which on the front will look like the BA logo. It will be illuminated, the B and the um, sky, uh, the skyscape at the bottom will be illuminated in white. Plus the ring around will also be illuminated in white. This will move in um, sort of a, a circular disc so that the, the button moves up and down on it uh, and it will be connected to the piece of wood behind it. So there'll be, you know, a bolt here running through with a nut on the end here. And then that will have a spring so that this will be tightened up to a point so that this sits flush at the front. You can then press this, which compresses the springs and then this uh, middle um, washer will press on the electronic switch here, which will turn the machine on. That's the plan. Um, I know Tabs is currently looking at the rest of the marquee and how that's going to play out. It looks like we're going to go with uh, some acrylic that will be pushed through another material, possibly steel, um, and then that will have lighting behind it to illuminate the uh, piece of acrylic, basically. Uh, but Tabs will update you more on that because he's looking at that currently. Um, yeah, and that's where I've got to. So the next thing that we're going to that I'll probably do is I've got some cardboard and I'm going to do a little mock-up of the machine um, and just see if I can make everything fit. Obviously, I've sort of proofed it here, but I'd just like to make a physical model. And it also gives us a bit more detail on the marquee. So I'll get into that now. Right then, I'm literally, I've got an old piece of cardboard here and I'm going to take the one-to-one uh, -one scale drawing of the outside of the box top arcade machine and I'm literally just going to cut this out of the card, as simple as that. Um, I'll probably cut this out first, I think. Um, yeah, I'll probably cut this out first 
uh, just with a scalpel. Um, and then I'll pull this on, trace around it, cut it out of the cardboard. I'll repeat that for a second time to get my two sides. And then I'll probably just create a few pieces to create like a front and a back. It, all, all I'm really trying to prove is there's enough space in it to prove my idea, to prove the concept. So let's get into it. So I'm just going to use the scalpel, just a craft knife or something will do. Make sure it's plenty sharp enough, just so you can cut it nice and easy. I'm just using an old piece of wood here, just to uh, something to run the knife against. Just makes it a little bit easier to get a straight line. But at this point, you know, it's, it's literally, a, we're in essence, we're making a prototype. So, you know, it's not essential that it's, you know, it's really nice. We can save the, our best work for the proper thing. So now I've got that, I'm literally just gonna take this and I'm gonna trace it onto this piece of cardboard uh, in the most appropriate place, which probably, get rid of that piece, it's probably here. I know this has got a, a mark in it, but for what we're doing, it really doesn't matter. Um, wouldn't it be better? that way around, maybe we'll be better that way around, there we go. So it doesn't matter if I flip this over because at this point they're, they're reversible. So I'll trace this. Now I've done that, I'll cut it out. So there's my side, uh, and I'm basically just gonna cut another one out. Right, and there we have it. We have the two sides of the barcade machine. Um, next, I just need to cut some pieces to go across the middle, and then we can have them as the arcade machine. So as I previously said, I'm gonna do this about 500 mil wide. So I'm literally just gonna mark 500 mil, cut some strips, cut some, fold some bits on the end and then either staple or glue them together to get me the sizes of the So now we've done that, I'm just going, I've made them slightly longer so I can put a bend on each end. So now I'm just going to mark, I've done a 25 mil bend each end. 
I'm just going to mark roughly them across. And put a kink in them. So I'm just using the rule just to bend the ends. Right, now that's done, we'll stick them to the uh, sides that we made earlier. So I'm thinking I'll put one down here, one of the back here, one of the top, and then maybe one in the middle. Yeah, something like that. So I'm just going to use some PVA glue just to stick these down. And I'll just put some weights on them to hold them while the glue dries. So basically I've glued that together and to be honest, it's not really worked quite like It's a bit too flimsy. I thought it would be more rigid than this. Uh, so I'm actually gonna cut full back and maybe a piece to go on the front that will just keep it a bit more rigid so I can sort of see how it's going. Um, because at the moment it's just it's all over the place. So I'm gonna do that and I'll probably sellotape them on because it'll be easy way. And I'm, I think I might put, uh, do this flap at the top to give it a bit more of an explanation of that. So time to cut back, 500 mil wide, and a front 500 mil wide. So I'll get on with that. So that's the back cut, um, and to do the front, because I've already cut this 500mm wide, I'm just going to use this piece, cut it to the right width, which I'll measure now. Right, now I just need to tape it all together and hopefully it'll be a bit more rigid than my first iteration. Gotta remember viewers, this is this is basically a proof of concept, so if this looks a bit rough and ready, I'm not really too bothered. Thank you. 
Right, I'm just going to repeat that exact same process at the front. Right, now we're talking, that's a lot better. So viewers, as we can see, we have a nice rigid cabinet. So we can see all the form and the function of it. I'm going to do the flap in a moment. Let's just like put the screen back up again so we can sort of see what it's going to look like. Yeah, that'll be lovely, won't it? Obviously the arcade buttons will be here, with the joysticks, and provided we can do it, controllers will come out of the top here, like we mentioned in a four, four gang formation, two banks of four, two banks of two. So I think, I'm going to have a look at my side panel I've got and I'm going to cut this flap here so I can sort of see how that's going to work, see, see if that's going to look okay. So I'll take some measurements off this and cut the flap. Right, that's my flap. So exactly the same as I attached the back. I'm just going to sellotape it on. This time I'm just going to sellotape it at the back so that it'll flip up. So viewers, that is basically how the flap's going to work. So there'll, there'll be a joint across the top, which is unusual, they don't normally have that. Uh, and this will be hinged. It'll have some, um, some springs that come down and that basically holds it shut. And then when the linear actuator is activated, the, the carrier that these are on, uh, which will be run up and down on draw runners, will move up like this. And then it will have some uh, bits at the end that will, will push on the flap lift the flap up and then the controllers will come out like so and then the the flap will because of the sprung will just be held because of the spring will just be held against the back of the cradle and then as this lowers down because of the spring on the um on the flap it will automatically close as this goes in so that is currently the plan concealed hinges so there's no hinges on the back and fingers crossed we can make it work. Um, unfortunately, that is as far as I can go at the moment. Uh, I'm, I've ordered loads of stuff for this, uh, such as the linear actuator, speakers, uh, bits of light, power supplies, uh, the arcade buttons, but unfortunately nothing's arrived yet. So until the stuff arrives, I can't fully prove the concept off so we can move forward into um, cutting some wood basically. Uh, now, one little thing to mention, on the, um, the project plan video, we said we were going to use a uh, black faced plywood. Now, unfortunately, having looked into this, it's it's a really expensive material. It's gonna, you know, it's like 150 pounds for the sheet material, uh, which, you know, is sort of a little bit more than we wanna be spending just on the woodwork side of the project. Um, so what we're going to do instead is just use normal plywood so we can still see the grain or the, the, the sandwich formation on the sides as a detail, but we're going to paint the black. Uh, so will, there'll be a painting process goes on there, you know, under coat, rub down, top coat, etc. Uh, and then that way that will save us a lot of money. Basically. A bit more work from our side, but it will save us a lot of money. So that's as far as we can go for now, but I think it's taken shape nicely. I think we've definitely proved that the concepts will work, the screen fits. We just need to make sure that we've got enough room for the carrier. But I think from the one-to-one the -one sketch I've done and this model, I think I've provided the linear actuator it doesn't turn up and it's enormous, I think we'll be okay. Okay, cool. So just wanted to briefly discuss the marquee. Um, so we're going to go over the tabs and he's going to show you the like concept art we've come up with. 
and then we're back to me to talk through some of the uh, prototyping I've done for that. So over to you, Tabs. Cheers, Rich. Um, well, before we cut to the uh, designing of the marquee, I do just want to show you something else I've been keeping myself busy with, which is the construction of the case for the Raspberry Pi 4. So we'll show you a little blow by blow of that before coming back to talk about the marquee. So more to keep myself busy um, than anything else while Rich tours away on the cabinet, I thought I'd put together the case we bought for the Raspberry Pi 4 um, to sit in. The idea being that it's going to be open-sided, so very breathable. There's a small little micro fan on top. As we've heard, the Pi 4 has some heat issues, so we're hoping this is just going to help it in the cabinet and give us that kind of ceiling to overclock it uh, should, we, should we need to to reach the likes of N64 and Dreamcast games. So I've skipped a few steps here, just putting these struts on and screwing the fan into this top uh, part of the case. Um, just so it's not super boring. Uh, but we'll, we'll speed along as I just put this bit together and we can test it at the end, see if the fan's working. So here we go. So there we go. I think that's how it's supposed to be done. I need to get a little um, kind of spanner to tighten these mini bolts at some point. But that's more or less how it's going to look. So just for those of you who might want to know, this is, I think, manufactured by GeekPie. So I bought this from Amazon um, quite cheap. I think it was about a tenner or just under a tenner. Um, so yeah, check it out. We're not sponsored, but it just looked to fit the part. So we'll see how it plays out in the cabinet. Cheers. And before I forget, just to show that uh, well, hopefully the fan works. Let's plug her in. And yeah, amazingly, you can, I can barely hear it, but that is definitely working. I feel a little gust of air, and maybe if I bring it close to the microphone, actually. Hopefully you can hear that too. So yeah, there we have it. Our Geek Pi case and our Raspberry Pi 4. Now where's that software retro pie? Well, Tabs doesn't appreciate my pie, but I do. Welcome back, everyone. Um, so, yeah, let's talk a little bit more about the, the marquee design and how that came into being. So, first of all, it was, I have to credit um, a chap I follow on Instagram. It's uh, I think his channel's called BB Retro, and I'll put a, a link in the description, and I'll just pop the picture up now, which inspired me. I think it was a picture of a, a Game Boy, which is a, a big theme of his channel, but it was the kind of the way he designed it, the colors, the style. And in fact, since then, I found it's quite a popular sort of a arcade retro graphic. So I think neon, pink neon, blue neons, and then you've kind of got this Tron sort of blue grid at the bottom. So yeah, that, that really 
got me, got the brain whirring. And in fact, at work, I'll show you this very crude picture. I was uh, just in between, as the thought struck me, I kind of worked up this little sketch. So obviously you've got the BA logo, and then you've got this, uh, the BA going into the arcade. So obviously barcade. Um, you know, I wanted it to be this sort of handwritten style, almost italic um, font, and then to swirl round and off into palm trees, just to kind of get across the whole paradise aspect of, uh, you know, an arcade experience. Um, we didn't have the, the grid at the bottom in at this stage, but it was in my mind. I just didn't know exactly how to accomplish it. So next up, we'll flash up on screen the next iteration of the, the Barcade Marquee. Um, and as you'll see, it's starting to look, look a lot more snazzy, uh, a lot more true to life at this point. So you should be able to see, to see the gridding at the bottom, the BA, you should see some zeros and ones, the binary code sort of cascading down from the top. Um, and then we've also got the palm trees again. So the issue with this one, I showed this to Rich, um, and as I'm sure he'll mention, there was an issue with the palm trees. They're a bit too intricately detailed to actually produce um, in the way he was you know, thinking of doing it. So we went back to the drawing board again, and um, I produced another quick sketch, which I'll try and get my hands on and flash up now with the palm trees, just to kind of simplify them a little bit. And then finally, um, we, we actually simplified them even further. So we've got a brand new um, design for the palm trees now, um, which again, I will show up here and you'll see this is more or less gonna be the final design. The gridding, the arcade font, which has come along leaps and bounds and looks so much more uh, professional. And then leading into the palm trees with the zeros and ones. So yeah. Um, I think that's, that's pretty much everything. Hopefully it's good to see the different iterations and how it's been developed, both between me kind of designing it, pie in the sky if you like, and Rich's more practical feedback as to how it's actually gonna work and changes we need to make. Um, so yeah, let's uh, pop over to Rich and he will tell us a bit about how he's developed the proof of concept piece in actuality. Um, and hopefully you'll like what you see. Thanks, Tab. So from Tabsy's concept art, this is basically what I've worked up. Uh, this is uh, cut out of marred steel. Um, and ultimately will end up being painted black. Um, this, um, th this piece here will basically be the button. So you'll press this uh, and it will turn the machine on. Um, so this will basically be um, I guess a round tin with the logo on the front, piece of acrylic on the inside, white acrylic, with some LEDs so that it'll illuminate white. And then that will um, move up and down in, in like a tunnel. Uh, and when you press it, it'll be sprung. When you press it, it will press a button behind and turn the machine on. So that'll be illuminated white. This section and the um, and the palm trees will be uh, will have a piece of uh, like neon pink acrylic behind it, so that will be illuminated in pink again. Little light box behind with LEDs, and this gridding, where it, which is cut through, it's hard to tell on this, but it is cut through. Uh, we have tried it with um, with light behind it, and it does does work quite effectively. We'll have a piece of blue acrylic behind it, and again will be illuminated. Uh, I'm thinking of attaching this to the wood uh, via. Um, concealed magnets. So this literally like clips to the front, uh, probably recessed in with some routing to the wood. Um, yeah, that's what we're thinking basically. This is only a first iteration, so there are some errors on it. I think we may change the palm trees. There's a little error in one of the uh, the grid pieces down here, which I need to sort out. Um, the, the logo is probably a final draft, I think. Um, but the, 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 the main bulk of it, this is a first iteration. So that's what we're looking at. So as you can see, uh, we've made the cardboard concept model, uh, which is sort of finished, but we're waiting for some stuff to arrive. Uh, we've done some work on the marquee, so that's coming along nicely. And I think we've proved that we can make that concept work. We need to fat that out a little bit. 
Um, and I think that's probably as far as we can go for now. Uh, we've pretty much ordered everything, We're waiting for a big order to arrive from CPC. Uh, I've ordered um, the arcade buttons and joystick, I've ordered the speakers, I've ordered the linear actuator. Uh, the CPC orders like all the cables, buttons, etc, etc, power supplies. Um, what else do we need to order? I think, as far as I know, everything's ordered. I haven't got the wood yet, so I need to get that, but that's from the local DIY shop. Just to mention, Rich, the, the speakers that I've ordered, um, we there's a slight concern there, at least from my point of view, because I think they're passive speakers, aren't they? So they're going to be connected oh, okay. by a 3.5 millimeter jack. So I'm a little bit worried how they're going to come across and what power it gets from the Pi. Um, so we'll play that one by ear as well, but it's a 2.1 system with a, a sub and two kind of PC speakers. Um, so that's no, kind I'm of hoping, a, go on. I'm hoping the sub is not too big because space is potentially a premium. I'm hoping we can we can you know get it in the, in there okay, but we'll yeah. I mean, surely there's options we could just try and take the speaker components out of the actual. Yeah, ab the, absolutely. The I mean, the, the actual. The actual speakers, so the two of the 2.1, uh, they will come. They'll have to come out of their um, their respective casings to fit in to where they're going. But yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that we don't have to go quite that detailed with the sub. But until it comes, we don't know. You know, it should be a suck it and see job. And I suppose worst case, if we want to use these and it's just not putting out the power we want, we could look to. I think you can get like amplifiers, can't you? Small yeah, amplifiers. Yeah, How much they cost, yeah, I don't so. know. I've seen one called Hi-Fi Berry, which looks very expensive. But we'll, we'll, we'll look, we'll cross that bridge if we feel we need to. But. Cool. And then what else do we need to discuss? So um, light guns. Uh, where did we get to on the light guns tabs? We're still, um, you know, kind of between the two solutions to be honest so we've got the aim track which is much more the premium option you got recoil namco style gun cons um and, which are really cool and, and definitely two controllers so you can definitely have two guns on that system the downside is i think they're wired um so that's a slight uh, downside but see, see i don't mind that so much just because that's that's how they would be in the arcade so True. i don't think that's the end of the world and it means but, you're not changing batteries so that's something absolutely but the the main thing is and you've just referenced to there with the premium ones they're really expensive uh, you know they're going to be over 100 quid you know, we're, we're talking for, for two guns, you're probably going to be between 100 and, well, 120 to 150 probably for two guns. So it's an investment. I don't know. We're still mulling it over, aren't we? And then you've got the kind of kind of faster solution. The cheaper solution will be these Wimotes. Yeah. And But you've got a number of moving parts there. Is like, how can we get two to work? Does that mean having two of these um, dolphin bars? Mm. Um, we've not quite researched that fully yet. I, I think in some configurations and with some emulation software, you can get away with one Dolphin Bar to two Wiimotes, but others you can't. So again, it just needs a lot of research. And, and also then you're talking batteries. I, th I don't know. I, I think the, the feel of them is different to the aim tracks because mm. um, it's basically like mimicking a mouse uh, on the screen. And again, I don't know whether you can get rid of the cross, the crosshair, the, the 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 trail that it leaves on screen. There's just a lot of uncertainty with with that solution. And I suppose a really good opportunity, Rich, to shout out to all our subscribers and tinkers out there. If you've got any first-hand experience with either either solution, the aim track or the uh, absolutely remotes, then please drop us a comment and hmm. just tell us what your you know what your thoughts are. Because it's tough, isn't it, Rich? Because we really you want to build this whole arcade, um, exp you know, the bar top experience because you want that kind of classic nostalgia fix of playing yeah, absolutely. arcade games. And, it, and if it feels a bit diluted and watered down, well, it's not going to be like, you know, when we went played Time Crisis or House of the Dead in the arcades. And mm, so is it even worth going at all if, if you can't do it properly? Mm. So, yeah, again, we'll, uh, we'll wait and see on that one. So I think, what, should we finish up, Rich, with our little surprise? Um, 
piece uh, contributed by oh, Ray, yes. Ray PW. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, Again, friend of the channel and big contributor and support to the channel is Raid PW, and he has recently obtained a 3D printer, and he's kind of working his skills up uh, behind the scenes on that. And he's it was surprised us with this actually, um, but he wanted to perhaps print some sort of um, button, uh, a, a logo of the channel as a button. And obviously, Rich has been beavering away with the marquee design. So what we thought was we would use uh, Raid's 3D printed button for, I think it's known as the hot key or special key of the, of the bar top. So this is gonna be probably on the, the front panel between the two you know, joystick and buttons in the middle. And it's gonna be an over, oversized button, we think, Rich, do we? 35 million, yes. you were saying? Yeah, yeah, although I think, um... Not not massively. I'm sure the um, I'm sure I read that the uh, the arcade buttons are like 30 mil, so it's it's not going to be a million miles away. But yeah, it will be slightly oversized. And and fingers crossed as well, we can backlight this one too, um, just to kind of really show it off because it's a it's an extra special little thing and you know nice bit of branding for the channel. So I'll actually I'll just hold up to the camera now. Raid's actually provided us with I don't know how well we'll be able to see them on camera. Um, maybe I'm too close, we'll back up just in case. But these are like proof of concepts. So, um, you know, he holds his hands up to say that these he was just playing with the formula and this was with an image that was not 100% accurate. He actually had to, I think, trace this himself to produce this one. And his painting tools at the time were a bit crude. So literally just to prove what the concept um, could look like. And in fact, we'll flash up on screen now, but he's shown us the latest iteration of of the button and as you'll see it's looking really nice now um, and there's a bit of a pink backlight as well which is to perhaps give you an effect of what that will come across like so yeah just a, a really big thank you to raid again it was a total surprise we were really touched by it rich weren't we oh and, yeah um, you know again i just um we touched on on the 100 subs video the the community support um that we're, we're getting for this project is insane. People are like really behind it, even though people don't know us, they're just, they're loving it, you know. And I think at the end of it, it's just gonna add so much more to it. It's gonna be so much more mm. of a meaningful, um, you know, project and, and piece that you get to keep rich at your home. It's, it's yeah, kind of exactly, got a exactly. bit of everybody's, you know, uh, support in there and, and, you know, with this button from Raid, it's literally somebody else who's contributed their creativity and and their help. So yeah, really Definitely. excited. Definitely. Yeah, I think that's everything we've got to tell you at the moment. Um, look out for more updates in the future. I'm not sure when the next one will be at the moment because it sort of depends uh, when the stuff comes and when we can fit in more work on it. So um, look out for the next video at some point. I'm hoping to book a weekend in with you, Rich, at some point, just so I can contribute something to the cabinet build. <laughs> Even if it's yeah, just yeah, cool. sanding a few rough edges for you, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, be nice perfect, to mate. help. Definitely. Sam, well, if you liked the video, give us a like. Um, and if you didn't, a dislike, because feedback's always welcome. As always, any comments, any information, any advice uh, about this project, Drop us in the comment. We're, we're always looking for, for more information and you guys have already helped us massively with all, some of the stuff you've already given us. So thanks very much for that. And, and obviously, if you did like all of, our, all of our work and everything that we see on the channel, give us a subscribe and don't forget to click that bell for notifications. And I think that's about it. Another one for the archive. Stamped and completed.